Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? Hope we're alive and coming at you here this cold Friday morning in my neck of the woods. It's not cold for most of you, probably, but it's cold for me. I know we got some folks here early in the chat. We got Chris. How's it going? John? Ujan? And I think Taylor is lurking around in there somewhere. Go ahead and say hi in the chat if you're here. We're going to get warmed up just a little bit and uh, let everybody get a couple of minutes to join in before we really get rolling here. Hope you guys are all doing well, guys and gals. So uh, just to quickly touch on this so we can uh, be 3 p.m. Nice. 9.01 a.m. here. So um, we're going to be covering motion page more today. So we're going to try to create some animations and um, got a few examples here. We're going to just kind of keep it really casual and light today and we're going to see what we can come up with. So I have no idea how this is going to go. I've, of course, used motion page a decent bit, but um, there's a lot of stuff I haven't explored, like scroll trigger I haven't used really at all. So there's going to be lots of stuff for us to cover here today. And um, we got Rados in the chat. So David and Rados are the two developers of Motion Page, also the, the team behind Oxy Ninja. So I'm stoked to have them here. And let's see how we're doing so far. So Connection says it's good. 4 p.m. in Germany, nice. Everybody hear me and see me loud and clear, I'm, I'm assuming. Andre, good morning. Kind of looking at the uh, levels and stuff, making sure all is well. How are you guys doing? Hope everybody's doing well. Oh my gosh, my chair's about to fall apart. I don't know if you just heard that. <laughs> it almost snapped. 847 in Nepal. Wow, that's crazy. We have a worldwide audience, as we typically do, but especially today. I'm stoked for this, so hopefully you guys are fired up. This is such a cool piece of software, so I'm not sure if, how many of you guys saw the uh, episode yesterday, the premiere we did, but there was like some, something like 70 people watching it live, and so it made me want to do a live stream on this. We're going to dive into it more deeply and see how we can do. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> Started GoFundMe for a new chair. Yes, please. Look at that. There's Luke. Even though it's late as hell over there in your neck of the woods, I think, what is it, midnight in Japan? I'm glad to have you, dude. Thanks so much. Uh, Andre, uh, not so much tired. I have a disgusting eye thing going on, which is why I have my glasses on today, trying to get this, um, cover it up a little bit. <laughs> I know nobody asked about that, but there it is. That's why. Uh, honestly, I need a pro streamer chair, Taylor. I need like the brand behind me, but the, some of the, most of those are super uncomfortable. Sarah, what's up? Uh, so real quick, I wanted to give a shout out. Uh, love from Pakistan. Awesome. Thank you, Sudius. Sudias. Hopefully I said that right. Um, I wanted to give a shout out if you look up here. So divide us right here. He not only became a member last episode, but he also dropped a super chat right there. And he was the very first person to ever uh, super chat on the channel, which is super awesome. We also have Luke re-upping Tobias. Uh, Taylor's not in there for some reason. I don't know why, but Taylor's there. Sarah, you're totally right. Teabag is 100%. That's the best way. It, it is the only thing that makes it better except just time. So totally. Uh, yeah, so we are a couple minutes in here. We got quite a few people. So let me uh, just go ahead and give you a rundown of what we're doing. So of course, we are going to be using motion page to create some GSAP animations today. What exactly we're going to create, I don't know. Um, essentially, what I have is a few example websites, and we're going to try to pull bits and pieces out of them. We do need to build them in Oxygen. So there is going to be some setup time here in Oxygen. Uh, I'm going to definitely make this stream, uh, you know, a decent length so we cover some ground. But we're going to build some stuff in Oxygen, and then we're also going to um, then move over into Motion Page and try to animate it. So we're going to see how much we can cover there. I, like I said, uh, don't exactly know. There are some things because, of course, I'm using a pre-release version of Motion Page that uh, perhaps might not work, or things that will come in later versions that aren't here yet. So keep that in mind. At the time of this stream, Motion Page isn't officially out yet. And uh, we will kind of see what they, uh, what happens in that time. Martin, welcome. Chris, glad to have you. Robert, thank you for becoming a supporter on the channel. Really appreciate that. 
Here we got David. There we go. That's that's what's supposed to happen right here. That right there. Appreciate you very much. David, glad to have you too. You're so welcome for the stream. Thanks you guys for making the badass software. Uh, so let me go ahead and switch over here real quick. So this is some of the examples that I have. So Taylor, your idea about the poll is uh, definitely cool. So Taylor sent me this example here, and this one's neat because it has the text that comes in from the left and right, and it also has that kind of highlight down here on the R client section, as you can see. So that's pretty cool. Um, then another one of these, this one I thought was absolutely amazing. I'm not sure how we're gonna pull this off, but as I scroll, it shows you more of their products. I thought that was so neat. That one's really cool. Uh, I didn't look at this menu. Menu is kind of interesting. Some of these sites, you know what's interesting with GSAP is especially on their showcase, um, some of these sites almost become difficult to use because the animations are so intense and almost overly done that I think there's something to be said for um, almost doing too many animations. Another one that I saw was this Soda website. So this is really similar to um, this stuff. I assume, are these chips? Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, this one here has like a cool scroll effect and the text kind of wraps over the top of the can. So that one's kind of interesting, but honestly, I think this one's way cooler than the, the can one. Then on this Ballistic Moon site, they had this neat effect where their like, you know, theme is this moon situation. I don't actually even know what they are, to be honest, but uh, it has this kind of cool effect where it continuously sort of, you know, reverberates out, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, this is something I'm not 100% sure on how we do, probably a border that we use um, um, motion page to then bend and kind of repeat over and over. And then this one I didn't really look at, but what, is this, what does this one actually do? Uh, oh, oh, this one also had the same kind of effect over here where when you hover over things, they kind of uh, open up like that, which is kind of neat. Also has, page animations like this. Um, and then the page, oh, not the blog. Why did it take me to a new tab? Then this, where like the, the page reload effect. Actually, Oxy Ninja has one of these as well. So the Oxy Ninja site, of course, has that kind of fade in effect for its menu options. So if we clicked like, uh, maybe like Help Center, you can see it's got that like page reload. So um, curious what you guys think about that. Martin says, Keep it simple, yes, absolutely. I think what I wanna start off with is this heading here and then this one, uh, the way they come in from the left and right edges and then the uh, kind of highlight effect. And then we'll go from there. So we'll kind of see. So Taylor says, would be cool to animate the plane. Let's see here. Is there a plane? Are you talking about the one in the header? Oh yeah, 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 I see. That's neat, okay. Well, we got a bunch of stuff queued up here. So let's just start with one and start making some progress here in motion page. And then we'll kind of go from there. So like I mentioned, you do need to start off with your layouts in whatever builder you're going to be working with. So at the time of recording, um, basically every popular WordPress page builder works. There are a few exceptions. I think Divi and WP Bakery are two that don't work, uh, but I imagine they're working on that. Uh, we're of course going to be using Oxygen. So we're just going to create a page here and we'll call this Bubka because that's what the name of this page is. My oxygen template doesn't have anything in it. So I'm just going to edit this page directly. And this page should be empty when we load it. I actually forget which version of oxygen I'm using. I'm curious because um, the builder slowdown is super annoying. <laughs> Luke. <laughs> Yeah, for the face of a thousand singing angels. I actually don't think it's a thousand. I think it's maybe like one or two. Thousands a bit much. But thanks, mate. Really appreciate you. One day I'll come give you a hug. Also, Taylor, you know it, dude. Okay, so we'll see about the builder slowdown, like I mentioned in Oxygen 381. Maybe we'll switch to the beta version of um, 39 beta, whatever it is now but I wasn't sure. I didn't want to introduce two pre-release softwares, so that's why I'm using a stable version of Oxygen right now. So on Bubka, I'm just going to focus on this white section here. I'm not going to worry about the stuff above it. So we're essentially going to need two headings. Then we're going to need just a section here. And then I'm assuming this will probably need to be a span so that we can style the border or the background color um, 
separately than the rest of the text because if we did just text, then it's going to end up styling this entire thing, which of course we don't want. Is there a slider situation here? Oh, it's below it, okay. So that's the testimonial slider. All right, so we're gonna use Hoverify real quick to look at some of these styles. So that is actually not what I wanted. Interesting. I guess I maybe will use inspect real quick to try to get to the heading itself. I just wanna know the color and the actual size and stuff, or am I just going to guess? I think that's what I'm gonna do. I don't feel like wasting a bunch of time trying to figure out the specifics here. That's interesting. I guess it's based on those classes. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, it does need to be coffee, not fruit. We'll just make a heading that's maybe 50 pixels with that green color, and then we will make an, oh, not a, not a column. One thing that's super interesting is when I'm streaming, the OBS software makes that gives it like mouse acceleration and it's super annoying. So let's go with 50 and then what does this say? Stand out and then grow strong. So stand out, I'm just gonna duplicate this, grow strong. This one has kind of an aqua green. I'm just gonna guess what the color is, something like that. And it's gonna be bigger than that. Let's go with like 72 or maybe even 80 pixels. And then the other text, we're just gonna take some text here and pop that in. Like I said, our clients is probably gonna have a span on it so that we can style it. And then that needs to be bigger and bolder. So we're gonna bump this up. Maybe 36 sounds good. Font weight, let's just go with like 700. And then our span style, we're gonna leave exactly as is because before it pops in, it is the same. Yeah, until that scroll takes place. So is that based on scroll? Yeah, it is, okay. Cool. So this is gonna be easy to put together. I'm just basically gonna center this stuff because is its final resting place centered? Yeah, it looks like it is pretty much, okay. So I wonder if inspect or, I wonder if inspect will give us any information about specifically what's happening here because I want to know roughly how it's, oh, the font size is actually based on viewport width. That's interesting. So it's a transform matrix. I don't know what that means if I'm perfectly honest. I forgot my head is on the right side today. So if, uh, if there's a situation where you don't see what I'm looking at, please scream at me in chat so I can see. Uh, also, I have to drop the obligatory, if you're watching and you haven't yet dropped a like on the stream, please do so. It really does help me. Appreciate that a lot. All right. So, um, I am just going to translate Y. Yeah, it's just going to be translate Y. So I guess I'll just basically do it. I'm not going to try to figure out exactly what's happening here. So, Thanks, Luke. You're the best, my dude. Appreciate you. So like I said, we really don't need to do much in Oxygen. Most of the, the heavy lifting is going to come from Motion Page. So let me make sure before I leave, we don't want to change anything here. The headings are a lot bigger. And actually, I will try to do what I just said about the font styles because it said it was viewport width, but I can't remember what size that actually was. Um, boo -doo 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 -doo. Where is it? Font size is 12.5 VW. Interesting. 12.5. Yeah, that's way bigger than it was. And then, oops, 12.5 VW. And then let's make our line height one on both of these. And then uh, that'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, close enough, dude. 32.5, 12.5, it's close enough. And then actually I'm gonna make this section full width and then I'm gonna remove the padding on the left and right sides. I'm not 100% sure that that would make any difference, but just in case, that's what we're gonna do. So I did ask David and he said that you can uh, have motion page and oxygen open and just use the refresh function in motion page to see the changes, but we'll kind of see from here. So 
there's that sweet intro animation to motion page and we're gonna create a new timeline here. So I'm gonna click that create new and we'll just call this one uh, Bubka. Then we're gonna switch our preview here to the Bubka page with, oh wait, actually we're gonna need more. Yeah, I know font size big AF. <laughs> I realized because we're gonna use a scroll, I actually need to get some other content in the page so we can scroll up and down. Um, so, Let's go back into oxygen. I didn't even think about that. We shall see. We shall see. Let's just stick a section up above this. I'm gonna make it a slightly off white. Let's actually go like, no, something like this. Let's go with the height of like 1500 pixels maybe and then we're gonna just duplicate it and stick it below it. So we actually have some room to scroll and kind of see how these, these things behave. All right, so if I refresh this now, ah, oh, look at that. There we go, so I didn't even have to leave motion page. I just clicked this little refresh button up here. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, I turned on tooltips in the settings. And then yesterday, one thing that popped up in chat was somebody asked about overflow hidden. You can actually go ahead and turn that on so if you have things that are animating off the left and right sides, which we probably will have in this case, you can control that there. <laughs> I don't know what conversation is going on in chat with Luke and Taylor, but I'm gonna let those boys be. Okay, so with our scroll trigger, uh, let's see, so use the scroll trigger to animate the timeline as it scrolls in and out of view. So perfect, lock to scroll bar, sync animation progress with the scroll bar. Um, I don't 100% know if we need that just yet. So animation starts when element enters viewport or is fully visible. So in this case, it actually does start before it's fully visible. So it will be enters viewport and then Let's say animation ends when is fully visible. We'll leave that as the defaults. Then scroller is based on viewport. So we have the start at 85%, which is down here. You can see this green line. And of course, if I drag this, you can change how that happens. 85% I think is probably gonna be pretty good for this. And then our end is 15%. So right at the top of the page, essentially. Locked scroll bar, I think is that animates based on your scrolling up or down. Yeah, that probably is true. Let's leave it as one second. We'll play with that. We'll turn on lock to scroll bar and then we're gonna go from there. So now with our from, we're gonna choose this selector, which is going to be our headline here and our translate. Let's see if I can get this right this time. Our translate Y is going to be, uh, dude, I, I swear, this is why I failed math class. This is why I failed math class. Okay, so our from and two, so our from is going to be like 80%. Oh, not 5,080, good Lord, 80%. I want it to be slightly off the page. Sarah, I know it's awesome. It's really, really cool. So again, like I mentioned yesterday in the other video, if you're essentially resetting the position of the element, you don't actually have to change the two. You can just leave that empty and just change the, um, uh, you know, from states. The inverse is true also. If you, if it starts as from with just zero and you want it to go somewhere else, you can leave from blank and go to two. <laughs> it would, Luke, it come all the way across the Pacific to my house. Okay, so that works there. And then we're just gonna duplicate this. That's that um, element right there is new, can't delete last item. I appreciate that. Rado says use start at 0% and scrollers based on viewport as you animate section that it is on the beginning of the page. I don't follow, but hopefully that will make sense here in just a little bit. So I'm gonna change this selector here to this headline, and then we need to change it from 80 to just negative 80. And then where is this one actually? Oh, this one is left aligned. Mm. Oh, well, I'll just change that. So the R client 
background is going to be on that span. And then it's just going to be a background that I assume translates in on the X axis. Mike, what's up, dude? Glad to have you. I saw you said you would watch it later. I think how, what, what time is it where you are? It's super, super late, isn't it? Start zero means it starts animating when it enters your viewport, not from the beginning of the page. Uh, where? But it's based on viewport already, is it not? So then does it need to change? Like, do they need to invert essentially like this? So the start would be down there and then the end is at, I don't know, maybe not 95%, maybe like 90. Yeah, because the start, I see, okay. Yeah, Mike, this, this is awesome. I wanna make sure before I get too far in here and start making changes that I'm doing the correct thing because I thought I had it right where the start is gonna be down at the bottom. Yeah, that's what I thought, David. 100% on the start and zero on the end because the start is gonna be at the bottom because that's the content you're gonna come up to first. Yeah, so it needs to be like this. Cool. All right, so with our headings, they're gonna move in like this. I wonder if we can change an ease property here to make it a little bit nicer. One thing I mentioned yesterday is there's a GSAP ease visualizer tool. So if you check this out, you can kind of look at the different curves and you can sort of see what those look like. So for us, maybe slow, uh, no, not slow. Let's go with power one. That looks pretty good. So power one there, and then I'm gonna click this other headline and then power one there as well. Ren, what's up, dude? Glad to have you. Um, so now if I click this animation, it kind of slows down right at the end. So that's pretty cool. All right. Um, the next one we want to animate is the, our client section. David says, keep in mind that if it's above the fold, you would add start more to the top of the page. Otherwise it would already be animated. Oh, right. Okay. So you would, would you put in a negative value there? Or I guess a positive value of maybe 150%. We can test that in a little bit because that would be interesting for animations at the top of the page, like at the top of your homepage hero or something like that. Then we are going to add a new selector here. This one is going to apply to our span. And then this one is gonna have a background color. I don't actually know what background color I used. Um, I wanna make it match, because it does match. Only if above the fold, got it. Tobias, what's up, dude? Welcome to the party. Um. Oh, here we go. I'm still in oxygen. Perfect. I can just copy the hex color out of this. Sweet. And why didn't it change? Does it need to be RGBA? Or am I just blind? Is that the same color? I don't think it is. Okay. Um, let me move this over here. Taylor says, could you set the background animation to a class and add it multiple places on the page? Yes, totally. Sarah, hey, good to see you. Website color, ooh, yeah. I kind of do, honestly. There we go. And I don't want to set the, oh, actually, should I set the background color on this span instead of trying to do it in motion page? Because you can set a background color I guess actually I would want to set the background color on this span and then let the plugin do the animation, I believe. Right? Or does it matter? All right, so I'll just refresh this. So there's the colors. So now with our span, we should have, oh, okay, David says here, 
you would require to have a separate div absolute position there and animate its size without affecting the text. Got it. So, can you, can a div go in a span? I didn't think so. So this actually, how do they do it on this site? Oh, they applied it to is wrapped. Hmm. It's funny how these, <laughs> these look simple on the surface and yet they're not. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so take this off here and then, right? Don't I need something in the content? I, I should have watched Kevin's video on pseudo selectors. I actually didn't do that. Um, with the background color, what do you put in the content field? Sorry if you guys hear insane banging. Oxygen default adds an empty string. Um, the insane banging outside, I lived near a military base and they're always doing testing. Last night was really bad and today is also bad too. So if it's like thundering, that's why. So display flex. Should have already been flex, I think. <sighs> So the span position relative and bef oh, 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 I see. Span position relative and before position absolute top zero, bottom zero and width of zero. Left zero as well. Okay. Okay. So Taylor says I built a website next to a military base. <laughs> Never guess what happened next. Yeah, they came and blew up my my house with their missiles or their machine guns is what they did. Okay. Uh the width on the before There we go, okay. Do we need our clients in the before? All right, I wanna make sure I'm doing this properly. So I can obviously add the text into the before pseudo selector. So is that the proper spot to do it? Chris, I, I was about to check your idea on the um, Z index value, but I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily correct. Also, for all of you guys that are here and welcome so many other people that are joining, thank you guys for being here. Drop a like on the stream for me. Z index of one and then on the other one goes Z index of two. No, didn't work. Tell me, Taylor. Oh, got it. That's what I thought, Luke. Good afternoon, Heinrich. Glad to have you. Okay, negative one. And then the before has our background color. So now, this on the front end still has 
our background. So our from is going to be the width, is it not? Let's, um, for some reason these didn't save. Let me refresh this. Did I somehow overwrite my changes? Okay. So on our span, no, not rotation. So our width is going to, no. Uh, wait, that doesn't help me. Can I get to that selector? Yeah, this thing is pretty crazy. It's so clean and nice. Well, this is clean too, the scrubbing. Oh, write it manually. Oh, okay, okay. So what is my span here? It is 864, so span eight. I actually didn't even know you could type in here. Wow, okay. That's crazy. Uh, am I an idiot? Is it not two? Oh, it's, it's not two. I'm a dummy. Um, span eight, six, four, B four. So my dimensions of width is zero. Did I do it wrong? Because it's dimension width of zero, that's what we set was 100% on the before of that span, right? Do I need to set this to zero? Maybe that property isn't correct. Maybe it's not the width. Okay, well, that could totally be just an alpha. Your before and oxygen page is overwriting it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like. Okay, so what's another way that we could do this? What happens if I... Hmm, hmm, hmm. The problem is like you could do it with another div, but then it's not gonna it's not gonna be like just remove hundred percent width. Okay. I wanna refresh this real quick. Wait, from zero to one hundred, right? I wonder if I need to refresh the builder. I wanna save this real quick. And then I wanna refresh this just to make sure there's not some weird something something going on here. Oh wait, wrong uh, library. Oh look, look, look at this. I actually didn't even notice this. Need to save an oxygen, yeah, right, I'm a dummy. Check this out though. Look at the playhead as I scroll down. You can see it moving. Look at that, it works. <laughs> it works in the builder, it's so cool. It's so cool. Oh my gosh, I love that, that's amazing. Okay, so we do have roughly the correct um, you know, situation going on here. So we have our from, and then maybe I need to set the dimensions on this to 100%. Maybe, yeah, maybe to David's point, it just doesn't quite do pseudos. Actually, so instead of changing just that one span, 
What if we just did the background color on the, the whole thing? Before I go deleting it, I wanted to make sure that there's not potentially one other mistake I'm making because I know somebody's going to yell at me if there is. But nonetheless, what we were just working on is functional. That's super cool. I don't know why it stopped doing the scroll effect. Maybe once I started manipulating stuff, then the scroll effect stopped working. But what I want to do now is we will drop, uh, wait, no, undo. Oh, my selector changed. People say you didn't save in oxygen after removing 100. Save. Save. There we go. Hmm. Sad. I don't know what that means. Switch on live mode, right? Oh, live. Oh, cool. Okay. I see. That's sweet. Didn't realize that. Okay, so what I want to do with this is instead of trying to work with that span, I want to make the background position on this entire text move in like that. Or I mean the background color, sorry. So that actually, you, you can see it's manipulating that now. So we're going to change this dimension. We don't want the width. We're going to go with going to delete the dimensions out of this and then we're going to go with um, oh if you start moving playhead manually live mode disables got it okay that makes sense so I still don't think we're going to be able to do the background unless we wrap this text with a div and that actually has the background So we're going to give that div the background, right? I'm trying to think here. Yeah, everybody's going <laughs> to throw stones at me. Um, if the div has a background. Wouldn't we want, all right, I'm, I'm thinking out loud here. Let's go with layout. I always get these backwards. So no relative. And then this one is going to become absolute. No relative and this one is going to become absolute. So then it's going to wrap to the edges of this container. Yeah, thanks, Luke. Uh, <laughs> Andre, nice try. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to put this behind my text so I can still get to my text here. So then on this div of 1664, if I changed that to a background color of, is it still my clipboard? It is. And then we're gonna set that Z index of negative one. So then this might not work I'm thinking, I'm thinking, trying to come up with a creative solution here. So then this text block, we're going to change this selector to, uh, where'd it go? Maybe because I set it to negative one, it can't pick it up. Okay. Uh, we'll remove that. And then this text. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, bear with me y'all. Uh, refresh. I guess I'll just type it in. What was my selector here? 
1664. Ah! I did some sort of shortcut. I don't know what I did. I pressed E maybe? Okay, 1664. So now we're going to start with a from of dimension width of zero and then a two dimension width of 100%. Look at that. It's actually pretty sick. It's not, it's not like the example because it's not on the span, but hopefully it's just a bug on the pseudo selectors and that will get fixed. That's really cool. Okay, so then if we go here. Oh, dude, dude, that's so awesome. <laughs> I love it. Man, that's so cool. It's so simple and yet so beautiful. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. That's so cool. Okay, so then what does it look like on mobile out of the box? I didn't do anything in oxygen. That is freaking dope. Okay. So, uh, one thing I thought about was um, the performance impact, which I know is not going to be substantial, but I was just curious how much code is actually output to achieve this sort of effect right here. Um, but damn, isn't that cool? That's so awesome. Well, there's one layout. Um, like I've said a million times, this is a pre-release alpha. So maybe, or actually, I don't think this is alpha. I think this is beta. Um, hopefully the pseudo selectors get fixed because that would, that would be so cool to be able to tie that into pseudo elements like we were trying to. But nonetheless, it still works. And all this stuff is still, um, you know, still functional. Andre says, I guess there's gonna be a lot of movement on upcoming oxygen sites. Yeah, I think before you hopped in, I was saying that there's a, um, like this thing that exists with GSAP animations and like lots of these websites in the showcase, they just get so crazy. It's just like almost too much. Uh, problem with Z index is that text is above that and it covers the whole space. We'll take a look at it. Got it. Yeah, no worries. I think it's still really cool how it is. Even if that was a limitation, I don't think that's that big of a deal. It's still super badass. There's the page. All right. Uh, let's do a lighthouse test right now. Okay. So inspect lighthouse. That's, that's confidence in your product right there. David says, let's just do it. All right, so generate. Let's see, let's see what Lighthouse has to say. There's not really a whole lot on this page, so I suspect it's not gonna come back with anything negative by any stretch of the imagination. Look at that. 96, 94, 100. What's it mad at us about? Render blocking resources, CSS dash icon, block library, WordPress jQuery, not nothing to do with, with motion page. Unused CSS dash icon, we could fix that easily. Block library, of course. Remain text, uh, Google fonts. Yeah, there's literally nothing, no mention. Uh, background doesn't have contrast, that's not their fault. SEO, document does not have meta description. Oh, wow. Page is blocked from indexing. Yeah, literally nothing. Cool. Like I said, that's confidence in your product right there. For those of you guys that don't already, haven't already signed up for their release, uh, click the link in the description below and you'll see the, the link to motion page. So let's go ahead and keep rolling. Uh, what I wanna do now is let's take a look at some of these other examples. Let me make sure there's nothing else on this site that was particularly cool. There's more of that span stuff. So that could be something we look at in the future. They use that a lot through their site. So I assume you could tie that into a class in oxygen and then you only have to animate it once. Uh, check code on the front end. Are you saying like in page source? There's probably not that much. I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm confident there's not going to be any um, any performance impact? <laughs> Sarah says I've signed up six times because she wants to make sure. I don't blame you. Anything else on this site? It doesn't look like it. They, I think, have used their animations really nicely. So 
these effects are just used sparingly enough that I think it's cool. There are simple things like we covered yesterday in the socials video where like those icons kind of popped in sequentially, which is cool. And that again can be done with a single class. You apply it to one element and then it just replicates out. So that one's cool. So thanks for this one, Taylor. He's awfully quiet over there though. Hmm, where is, where is Mr. Taylor? I'm kind of starting to feel like he's not here anymore. I wanna say thank you to every single one of you guys watching so far. This is super, super cool. I'm so stoked on this software. I wanted to mention, if you're bummed on uh, a bunch of these GSAP videos coming, you can go ahead and unsubscribe now because there's gonna be a lot more coming. So there's that. Yeah, what's the difference between British tea and tea in general? Is there a difference? Okay, let's work on this chip situation here. I think this one's extremely cool. So I wanna get this one working. So I wanna figure out roughly how they've structured this. There's no way, Taylor, you said I don't, I, what, you told me recently, I thought you, what? I don't, I don't know about all that. All right, so how do they have this? set up here, this carousel. So they have, what's all this? Is it just images with an A-link? Yeah, okay. So it transforms as you scroll. So this container that it's in, its width is 225 VW. Time to develop the flavor when we ship it from all over the world. Yeah, totally. Luke, isn't the Japanese tea situation pretty good? I'm I'm stoked to try it. I had my trip booked for November, which obviously didn't, didn't happen because of COVID, but uh, hoping to get there next year. So we have a div width of 225. Its height is 100%. Doesn't look like there's anything else uh, tricky going on here. And then what is these? So we have opacity of one. Is it a, it's okay, so it's width of 25 VW. David said, this one would need pin, which is not there yet, but you can do it similarly using fixed position. What is pin? Is that a GSAP thing? GSAP pin? So the pin element I don't know what pin means. Hmm. Well, okay, so maybe we can do like a side scroll situation like that. Japanese tea is Graham's. <laughs> yeah, there are a bunch of Brits here. Luke was here. Uh, the, the other, or at, well, Chris, I meant to say. Uh, who else did we have? Bradbury and then somebody else, I think. Obviously, Taylor. Uh, so because it has that kind of pinwheel effect on this site, is that what you're talking about, David? That's the pinwheel function? Oh, we have a pin ready, but not fully tested. Okay, so it's essentially like an anchor if you pin paper to a board and spin it around. Got it, okay. But if I did fixed position, couldn't we get like a side scroll effect? rather than the pin. The pin is dope, but uh, I won't worry about that for right now. We, we would not necessarily have to worry about the translate because that's looks like what's happening is it's like translating in an arc off the page. I guess what I'll do is go ahead and... Good example of GSAP and pinning and other stuff. Code pen, hopefully this isn't a sketchy link. Yeah, that is really cool. Very neat. Okay, well, pen is coming. So what we're gonna try to do is just recreate this, but I just wanna do like a side scroll because it's just like this soda animation that I showed you guys earlier. It's the same idea. 
And I'm actually curious how they did it as well. Let's see. Um, so div can wrapper. Can group. Where is it? Position is absolute. Flex direction is row. Left calc is 100 minus 5 VW. This, this is super annoying. They're, they have like this stupid like timeout effect. I hate that. Okay. Yeah, okay. So they're basically using the left position on its wrapper to push it slightly off the page. And then as you scroll, then it starts to come back in. So if I... Yeah, so they're just translating it back onto the page as you scroll. And then once you get far enough, then it goes down. Okay. Let's just try to recreate that. So let me go back out of oxygen here. I'm going to create... Actually, I think I have a page for soda cans. Yeah, I do. I'm down, David, if you want to send me the, the untested version. Oh, this example also uses pen. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I didn't realize that. This one says, why, why would you do that? Why would you time somebody out of your page? What if they're reading? That's so annoying. Holy crap. That looks absolutely terrible. This is, oh my gosh, dude. Okay. So this is gonna be pretty big and then I'm gonna make its width like 50% or something. I don't actually know what it was, doesn't matter. So this example, David, without pin, is this just not possible? Uh, there is no public beta right now. It's gonna be released relatively soon. I don't actually know when that is though. All right, so I'll just create a div. Um, in that example, what, it was absolute, was it not? I don't think it was flex. Um, can wrapper, can group. It would be possible with fixed workaround, but I'm sure if they use GSAP in your example, it's pin. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't actually know. It was on the GSAP showcase site, so I assume it is. He... Shai Tagal says, I'll be the first one to buy. You're going to be hard pressed to be the first one to buy. <laughs> There's so many people that want this plugin. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Uh, for those of you guys that haven't dropped a like on the stream, please do. Thank you. And subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, let's see here. I wanted to give a shout out to all the recent members. I think we're at like something insane. I forget how many members we're at now. Let me let me look. Let me look. I want to give you guys a shout out. All right, let's see here. We got 14 members. Let's go. Yeah, Taylor dropped that fire emoji in the chat. Um so Robert, Luke, Dividus, Luke again. Pawan, Taylor, John, Tobias, Jason, or uh, John, actually, Jay Berrios. John, right? Or Joshua, sorry. <laughs> Kyle, Cito, Daniel, Heinrich, and Evan. Thank you, guys. Birdbrain, hello. We do have a worldwide audience today. $34.99 for 12 tennies? Oh, yeah, that's that's a lot. Yeah, Luke again. Luke's got the double sub. That's some dedication right there, dude. You rock. All right. So this was positioned absolute, and then it just uses transform. Hey, welcome. 
we, we seriously do have a worldwide audience. We're on like almost every continent, I believe. We had somebody, well, actually, I guess the guy from Nigeria was yesterday. Let's see if we can make this work. So I will just use horizontal. I'm gonna go with another div. We're just gonna call this can. Um, we're gonna pop in an image. They do some sort of Photoshop trickery because they have like a can and then they overlay the image on top of it. I'm actually not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna stick an image in here and then uh, let's go with just a margin right of like 15. I'm gonna do this a little hacky. And then let's change these cans. Hey, who says, where's your premise slug merch? Actually, there is only, there's only three people in the entire, let's see, three people in the entire world that have premise slug merch. There's myself, Taylor, and then Kyle Van Dusen from the admin bar. But if people were interested, I could. I just didn't think people would want to buy it. I was like, just didn't, didn't think that. I wanted to make cool stuff. I haven't made cool stuff. I'm going to get Ren to help me design some stuff that looks really good. Okay. Um, yellow. I'm going to do a couple more. So we have some stuff that kind of goes off the page here and uh, image. Maybe I should have set it as a background color. Okay. Lastly, blue. All right. So let's see here. Why is this one so much bigger? That one just decided to be bigger for some reason. Guess that's okay. So we'll change our section width here to full width. We're gonna change this div. Uh, this one was called like, can wrapper or something like that. We'll add a class just in case, give us some flexibility in case we need it. Um, let's see. So then our can wrapper div was can group. It's left was calc 100 minus five VW. So that's an interesting one. So size and spacing, uh, that would be left absolute left and then change that to none. And uh, I'm assuming we need a height. Is that why it just disappeared? And all of our stuff just went away. So visibility overflow is visible, right? Did I do that wrong? Let's see. Position is absolute, flex direction is row. What else? Width 100. Oh, width 100. There we go. Okay, perfect. Why is that one so much bigger? It just feels entitled for some reason? Yeah, I'm lost. Okay. So I want to make these all the same size, but homeboy here decided he wants to be bigger. I don't want stretch. I guess I'm just going to delete that one because he just wants to cause problems. Maybe they're different sizes or something. This one's slightly different, so maybe I'll delete this one too. Because otherwise they're all the same height, which makes it nice and pretty. And then I don't think I need 100% height on this, do I? No, I don't, okay. So we're gonna leave that as is. I'm gonna add in another section. Uh, good question, Sarah, I'll check that in just a second. I'm gonna change this one to like 1500 pixels and we're gonna do the same thing, just a slightly off white background color to give us some scrolling action there. Oh yes, we need the man, the myth, the legend, Gordon. Please do. <laughs> Sarah, it totally is the easy way. Just delete it. 
delete it until it's not there anymore. So if we go on the front end, this should look super jacked up. Yeah, it does. Okay, but what we can do is change that in the settings. So the overflow is hidden. Um, Robin, you did miss a little bit, but there's gonna be a replay of the stream as soon as this is over. And I am recording this too. I might chop this up into a smaller video, possibly. I don't know what I'm gonna do just yet. Um, let's see, what else do we need to do? So on their element here, is there anything else? So their can wrapper, flex grow one, flex base is 20. And then there's some margin. I guess I'll add margin to the right of my wrapper just in case. I'm not sure what they did there to need that. Just some extra spacing off to the end, but it's overflowing, so it doesn't actually make any difference. Okay. All right. I just want to see if we can make this scroll now. So I don't actually know that this is going to work because this is kind of hacky and we don't have pin yet in um, motion page, but we will see in a minute. Excuse me. Okay. So I'm going to save this, leave this open because of course we can still uh, have oxygen open while we're in motion page. And for those of you watching this after the fact, I already shared that you can use this in other page builders as well. We're just going to create a new timeline. We're going to call this one sodas. And then we're going to switch to the soda cans page. So then our from Wait, does it cover up the heading here on the real site as you scroll? It does. Okay, so it keeps going all the way down. So in Motion Page, we're going to have a scroll trigger. Uh, lock to scroll bar. This is what David was talking about when it's above the fold. So uh, he was saying the start would be like 150%, right? Like a higher value. Gordon, what's up? Good to see you. Thanks for joining. And then our end is gonna be basically right here at that section because the animation actually stops. And like, it, it, well, it still kind of continues, but it before you actually reach the end of it, it, it starts bringing you down the page. So if I move my mouse up above these, it still keeps me scrolling there. Okay, I just wanted to kind of check how that works. Yeah, Gordon, that is really cool. There must be there must be two different things going on here because I shared this earlier. What they did was essentially have the um, this the can itself is um, just like a mock-up, and then these images are overlaid on top of it, which is pretty cool. So there's actually a lot going on here, which is pretty neat. But with our from, we're going to grab. I don't know if it's going to be the can or the can wrapper. I think it's going to be the can wrapper. Is that what I called this? Yeah, we can use the class. There's not really any advantage to us using the class as far as I'm aware. Let's just do it though to prove that you can. So the translate is going to stay there right? Let me scroll back and see kind of how they're doing this. So it's translating. Mm, yep, 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 yep. Okay. So that's basically all it's doing there. If you refresh the builder, you can click on update button and you can use the pin after that. Oh, uh, okay, so refresh. Ooh, -hoo -hoo, here we go. Let's, let's do this. Some live updates from the dev team. 
This is why you guys are going to get paid the big bucks. David can't write messages. <laughs> oh no, tell him to refresh. That's sick. Okay, so, oh, I didn't save my timeline. Whoopsie. Uh, soda, soda cans. And then homepage, soda cans. Okay, so how does pin work? Transform origin, I haven't looked at that. Oh, scroll trigger, whoops, wrong tab. Um, pinned element. Pin selector. So which one enables selector scanner? Which which element do I actually wanna pin? Is it my, my section, like the main wrapper? Add space for pin element. There's a couple of options here that um, I'm not familiar with. I haven't seen this until this very second. So hopefully somebody that knows what pin is can chime in. Rados or David would be awesome. I don't know what pin selector we want. So it's the parent element of my wrapper here. So is it 749? Is that what my div here? Oh no, I'm assuming the, the parent element, the wrapper of all of the, those cans, so 649. I am back, <laughs> welcome back, glad to have you. Add space for pinned element, we'll leave that off. Pin reparent, don't know what that means. Uh, um, not quite sure I follow your question, Gordon, but this does it for you. So you can use it on any page builder. It can be Elementor, Oxygen, um, Beaver, tons of them. There's quite a few that work right now, right out of the box. Uh, let's see. Now add your first inner selector as animation. Okay. So then, gonna be 849, right? And then translate, here we go. Nope, why? I'll get it one day. Oh wait, our from is gonna be just the default and then two, 15. Wait, what? So it's not Y, it's negative 15. So my moving left, so it's going to be Yeah, I definitely appreciate the fact that you guys haven't tested it. If it's a plugin with its own UI, you don't need a builder, right? Like it would work with Gutenberg or even a plain rote. Uh... Oh, move start positions. Oh yeah, I forgot to do that. I had it at like 125 before. Let's see, so maybe I have the wrong selector here. And then also something happened to my layout with this thing. So when I added this, Hey Amanda, welcome to the potty. 
pin just adds fixed on that, so it's normal behavior. Oh, okay. So, then don't I need to stagger to get the animation to continue? All right, so now enable live and scroll. And then do I wanna make this longer? Oops, live. No, I guess I don't want that one to be three seconds because then it's gonna make that translate animation three seconds. You should just need to add animate from right to left on the parent can wrapper. Oh, okay, so am I just using the wrong selector here? Oh wait, negative 15, is that correct? Hmm. <laughs> I feel like it's so close. I broke it. <laughs> okay, so they're down at the bottom of the page for some reason. Uh, Pedro, welcome. I don't know what I did. Negative 15, translate X, because that's just our left and right values. Uh, Hmm. <laughs> Where did it go? Why did I, <laughs> how did I break it? <laughs> I don't know what I did. I just don't know why I pushed it all the way to the bottom. I, I know you guys said this is untested, so perhaps there's something else that's, that's uh, broken here. I broke it. I kind of want to just restart this because I feel like kind of feel like there's something going on here. I'd like to just redo this. So I got that. So I'm gonna come back here. So I'm gonna create this new timeline. We'll just call this soda cans new because we changed so many things that I want to really like take it from the top. So scroll trigger. Let's change this to a half second delay. So we're gonna to change to pinned element. Our pin selector is going to be the parent container, which we called can wrapper. So we'll use that dot can wrapper. So then can you try to change start to 20%? And then our end is going to be something down here like maybe 85. Okay, so then with our from, we don't need to change anything. And our two, the selector is going to be which one? Am I moving the entire container? Which means that I can't use that as my pinned element, right? Because if I'm using the container, that must be why in their example they have two different divs. Oliver, welcome. Glad to have you. Let's 
see here. How long have we been going? Uh, an hour and 15, cool. So does it need one more div wrapping it? I wanted to look real quick at their setup. The selector of the can should work. Okay. So then what did I call this one? So just can. Yeah, you guys did update it extremely fast. So dot can, our translate is going to be, uh, let's see, negative 15. Okay, so there it is moving properly. So then I wanna stagger, right? 0 0.5. And then because we have a bunch of them, we need to make this longer, don't we? Oh wait, so maybe the, the translate needs to be much larger. Oops. Oh yeah, true. Good call, Luke. Okay, so then do I need to do some negative X value of something crazy, like negative 500 to get it to push all the way over? Oh, oh, oh. we're on to something here. Okay, so they keep going off the page on this animation. It only shows a couple of them at a time. Percentages are calculated of the box size, so 100% is its width. Thanks, Bradbury. Appreciate you hanging out all, all this time. Have a good evening. Luke, is that a good oof or a bad oof? All right, so animation saved. Let's go ahead and refresh. Oh, maybe I'm doing this wrong. I set this on the can of two to negative 750. Maybe our scroll um, positions are wrong. Good oof, yeah. <laughs> Is our scroller in the wrong position? Let's see here. Oh, it's interesting. You can actually kind of see it changing based on where you're putting your scroller. gonna give me a seizure though I actually don't know where this is supposed to be quite honestly there's a lot of, there's a lot going on here okay so it is working Sarah, uh, would this be an above the fold instance? Yeah, I think so because on this example site, it is right at the top of their homepage. So when when you're scrolling, as you can see, the cans kind of go by, which is what we're like vaguely close to. I just can't figure out why it's now pushed all the way to the left before I start scrolling. So I don't know exactly what I did wrong. I think I feel like the problem is something to do with one of these options up here, maybe the scrollers or the scroll bar. Oh, your in scroller needs to go more negative. Like negative 50 or something? Okay, we were on the same page there. Oh, yes, dude, let's go. <laughs> Obviously this isn't quite right because this stuff doesn't stay. So maybe the section needs to be our pin selector and not the wrapper of the cans, but that is almost what we want. So let me go back here. So our translate of negative 750%, I don't think is quite right, so. Oh, wow, that's really bunching up. Maybe, maybe actually I'll just leave that alone for now. I'm gonna go with 
I want to change the pin selector from our can wrapper to whatever this section ID is called. So section 149. Um, so we saved that. We're going to save oxygen. And now, yes, let's go. So the scroller, um, there's something slightly off, but you can you can see I can see the first can and then it starts to move in. So this is not quite the same as the soda can animation, but this is like the bones of it to start achieving what you're actually after. So then I guess I would need to make my, let's see, how would I do this? I'm trying to think about how we get the cans to keep moving across the page. Yeah, David, thank you for your help. That's awesome. So when it first starts, you have one ever so slightly visible, then they start to go off the page. They keep going off the page. And once you start to get towards the end, the right there is where it begins to scroll down. Could the default position of the can wrapper be in the middle and then set start to 100% to negative 100%? David, I think that start at 100% just pushes the pin container below the screen. I feel like it's super close. So you can do pixels, but percentage what if we went like negative 1000 instead of negative 750? That one pushes this one really far over and then it goes off the screen. Oh yeah, so we can't do that. I just, just for the interest of like the way my brain works, I wanna know what happens when it's at zero. Okay, so nothing happens when it goes to zero. I, for, I keep forgetting I can look at this in the timeline here too. Taylor says, in oxygen, put the can wrapper in the centered on the screen. So am I gonna be taking off what I did earlier with this calc stuff, Taylor? You want me to center this? Mm. Num four full screen. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. So then, Taylor, do you want me to horizontal align this so they go over top of each other? Or just leave this as is? I know there's a bit of a lag. That's why I'm waiting. Patiently waiting. Somebody play the Jeopardy music. Then animating X from 100% to negative 100%, okay? And I'm not doing it on the can, correct? I'm doing it on the can wrapper. So translate X from, from translate is X 100%. And then to, ah, there we go. Yep. Totally. That's it. And then, do we actually still need the stagger? I don't think we do because it's on that. Sweet. Nice. 
Nice. Okay, so for, for some reason, it jumps one click of the scroll wheel, boom, brings it right there. Why would that be? Uh, I feel like it's something to do with this position right here. Maybe if this is not horizontal. I don't think that's going to make any difference. Yeah, it still jumps to the far left edge. Uh, let me refresh this preview real quick. So the start, it works in the builder. Um, makes me wonder if it's something front end. Oh wait, when I turn on live, Hmm. <laughs> it feels so close. I kind of like... Yeah, I don't know why it does that. It didn't do that before. What if we... What if we give this div just... Or... I wonder if we give this div like a bunch of maybe left margin... Hmm, no, that's not gonna help. What about if we did it on the heading? Just to test. Well, no, it's because of our container, I guess. Could I set this section to full width? I did. Is it overflow? Do I want overflow visible on this, maybe? Yeah, one, one click makes it just jump like that. That's really interesting. Let's go layout. Is your section set to relative and can wrap or absolute? I had turned off, uh, I had turned off that Luke. I am interested Andre to see, like you said, turning absolute back on. Yeah, okay. So absolute works. That's it. Still not quite perfect, actually. Awesome. So our Container down there starts moving up a bit early. I think these cans are a lot bigger in the mock-up than they are in our demo here, which is part of that right there. But we can actually um, fix that pretty easily by giving these maybe a width of like, what would it be, 250? Yeah, it is still jumping, you're right. Are they already 250? Oh, the width's not doing anything. Start position should be on 0% if animation is in hero section. Ah. So start of 0. Oh, it was at 11. Or value close to 0. Okay. Oh, wait. Why did it... Now it's at the top of the page. What did I do to bork this thing? Oh, I guess it's me messing with these widths, right? It doesn't like me doing that. Is that the problem? No, it was actually, interestingly, when I changed, oh, let's see, make sure to have start position above the element, otherwise when you start scrolling, it jumps, okay. So the start is above the elements. Remove left wait say what it starts from 100 percent oh start position should be zero is that what you mean
I want to make sure before I go click in more stuff, I probably, I'm sitting here thinking there's a bunch of different variables we're changing here. I wanted to see kind of what we're looking at before we uh, go make it a bunch of changes. I think you do not need that calculated value for left on the can wrapper. Yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like. Okay, so then now we remove that. So it's, we need to change this back to, what was it, 100? Oh, we made it worse. That calc does seem like it is helping. Uh, what if it's like 85 viewport width instead of calc? Is that going to work? The scrollers start coming up. Too soon, or maybe just remove from properties completely. Oh yeah, yeah, you might be onto something here, David. And then Taylor says, does in need to be bigger like 200? Andre says, I really have to get my hands on this thing. I know, the thing is, it's really, really fun to play with. X 100 starts it from the edge of the screen. Yeah, that is better, Taylor. When it's at negative 200, the thing is, though, matching this example, like I said, you still see the cans when it starts scrolling. So I guess it wouldn't quite be 200. It would be maybe something less than that, like negative 150, possibly. Kind of seems like it works better with no x there, no x value. Okay, that's essentially, there it is. There it is right there. You can see it in the builder. Um, it starts scrolling right before. So I guess, would I change my scroller to based on viewport like negative value just ever so slightly? Oh no, positive value, like 10%. Scroll more in, negative 100. I, I feel like I'm trying to fig, f fix it to where, it, yeah, there we go. See, it's getting better when it was at like, whatever it was, 12%. I don't want it, I don't want the page to jump down and then the can start moving. I want it to do that, which seems like it's almost working. So scroll bar in, negative 100, Taylor. Ah, it's so close. It seems like it got worse. I want to see it real quick on the front end. There it is. Yo, let's go. <laughs> That's it. That's totally it. That's exactly how I wanted it to. Obviously, I don't want it to overlap this next section, so there's something else I need to change there, but look at that. It's so sick. Let's, sorry, that was super loud. I apologize in advance for all you headphones users. Let's do it. That was, that's sick. I'm excited if you can't tell. That's really, really dope. Man, that is just so awesome. That's fucking awesome, dude. What a dope piece of software. This is absolutely amazing. And it's so simple. Obviously this is just a really rudimentary layout, but it's just amazing. 
Nick says, a friend of my dad's worked on a base testing GPS targeting back in the day that would sometimes get bored at night and put in the coordinates of their trailers. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're, what you're uh, talking about. I can't wait to start guessing all the numbers. Yeah, see, Luke, that's the thing is this is the kind of testing that I would be doing in, um, you know, on my own time, uh, basically just trying to figure this out, not on stream, and then I would make a more polished video. That's why I think the streams are so cool because it's just such a community effort, everybody here. The only thing that I want to figure out is why this starts overlapping. I guess it's the end scroll, right? It would be this end. So like negative 150. Seems like the builder deviates ever so slightly from the front end, but I'm sure they'll they'll um, fix that because that everything else seems to work like nearly perfectly. Huh. What is it? Why does it overlap like that? Oh yeah, Chris, totally. You're 100% right. What's the overlap there for, I wonder? <laughs> Andre. <laughs> Not today, mate. So in their case, the next section is white. So I wonder if I put a heading in here and there's some content in it. Does it make any difference? Oh yeah. Yeah. The can wrapper is absolute. Is it white, Luke? Where did it go? Arrgh. Can group, uh, background is white, yeah. So it ends below the text, gotcha. Yeah, well, I mean, it's close enough. I'm really happy with that. So I'll just, for the sake of this example, add background color of white to that. And then their next section is white anyway. So they're kind of cheating but we could figure it out. I think removing absolute and just using from 100% should work. I mean, that's just, that's just awesome. I'll test it for you, Taylor. Uh, I'm gonna save real quick. So if we need to, I can refresh it uh, or come back to this. Actually, I'm gonna refresh oxygen real quick. So we have our history pane just in the root. So if we make a mistake, we can just come back to it. I do want to test it because we're so close to it being like nearly a functional layout that I honestly, I do want to get this to work properly. So you said removing absolute and just using from 100% should work. What's up, Elijah? I'll show you in just a second what we uh, have been working on. We now have done two different layouts. So I'll show you here in just a second. See if we can get this to work. Apparently absolute is needed, Taylor. I did use 85 VW um, in our left position. So is are the sections relative by default? Would that make it so it doesn't overflow? Let's see. I don't think that's actually going to make any difference. Oh, of course, it's going to take forever to refresh now. It's almost there. Okay, so Elijah, this is what we made. Basically, like, there's this website here that has these, like, soda cans and this animation that scrolls across. And obviously, it doesn't look exactly the same, but we essentially recreated the same thing here. And there's, we were, I was just trying to fix this overflow issue, but our container is absolute. So I was just trying to see. United Soda Cans are super happy. Tesla is super happy from yesterday. Uh, who else did we showcase? Uh, real quick, for those of you that have joined the stream late, the other thing that we did, uh, let me get back over here, was we created this page. So we did just a simple little 
animation where um, these text elements move in from different sides and this background color kind of scrolls in as you can see. So if we move our thing up and down, there we go. So those are the two things we've been working on so far. There was one other thing I wanted to do, which was this other example. I really liked this pulsing kind of hover effect. And obviously it's very much on brand for this company because they're whatever ballistic moon, no idea what that is, but has this kind of pulsing effect, which I thought is really sick. Chris, dude, thank you. I don't have a Tesla referral code, but <laughs> maybe I need to. Also, I imagine there's some of you guys that are new. Please drop a like on the stream while you're still here. We are at, how long have we been doing this? An hour and a half? What are we at now? Hour and 40. Uh, so what I'm gonna do real quick is since we pretty much have this soda can thing dialed in, I'm just gonna take a quick break and then we'll come back. David says that was the purest beta test of pin ever. Thanks, Jonathan. You're welcome, dude. That was, you guys made it a, a beautiful piece of software and everybody's stoked to check it out. So I'm happy to put it through its paces. This is really cool. I'll, also, it's worth mentioning for those of you guys that are just joining this pin uh, scroll trigger that we're working on. We're using a scroll trigger animation and um, pinned elements is what we just did. This is actually a beta. This wasn't even in the version that I had. They gave it to me live here on the stream. So really, really awesome shout out to them. We're gonna take just a quick break. Uh, maybe like, let's see, like a couple minutes, two or three minutes. And we're gonna work on maybe one more thing and then we'll go from there. Uh, I'm sure many of you guys have work to do, but I just thank you so much for joining the stream and it's not done yet. So stick around. Elijah says, Jonathan provides great opportunities to see how the thing you labored over from once immediately breaks <laughs> when a real user touches it. <laughs> Super funny. Happy to be of service to you, Elijah. All right, for real, I'll be back in like two minutes. Let me mute my mic real quick, just in case any treachery.
Are you guys behaving yourself? What's been going on here? Oh, Nick, okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, I actually did mute it. I didn't I didn't press the button. There is a mute button right here. Um, blanket over the cam. Yeah, I should have done that probably. Uh, webflow, webflow. Thought of something on my computer. I freaked out. Oh, I didn't I didn't un Oh, I uh, oh, I unplugged. <laughs> I had my phone plugged in. I unplugged that. <laughs> I see what you mean now. Okay. Oh, let's see. Let me make sure the world is not blowing up over here. Do, 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 do. Uh oh. Elijah posted in the Facebook group. Oh snap. Oh no. RC2. No wonder why he wasn't here at the start of the stream. Somebody says it's still slow as hell. Yeah, I bet it is. <sighs> I love people's support. <laughs> what does RC2 do? So, uh, correct uh, structure, pen, drag and drop in Firefox. You know to do. RC2, let's go. I know, Luke. The dark mode was killing me the other day. I don't know why I turned it off. Here's my secret behind the scenes Facebook. Hey, look, it's David. Okay. So, uh, what I wanted to do now is let's see. According to my analytics, we just spiked from 35 to 62 viewers, and then it dropped back down to 50. I mean, uh, 34. And then YouTube is screaming at me about some sort of bitrate connection, even though it says perfect connection. I don't know what that's all about. All right. Um, let's see. What else did I have? So we could actually... We could try this another time. I think since we ended up doing the soda cans, I kind of forgot about this page, but this one is dope too. Um, maybe I'll do this as a, like a regular video, like a more polished tutorial video. I'll figure out how to do it instead of us fumbling around for a while. We already vaguely did that with the soda cans anyway. I wanted to look at some of these other options and see, this one's kind of crazy looking. This one kind of hurts my brain. But these scrollers are pretty cool. So this one, this is like one click of the scroll wheel and it takes you up and down. Is that pin as well? I guess it is because it kind of keeps you on the same page. Uh, this one is really not that interesting because it does essentially the same thing the Ballistic Moon does. Is this an Oxygen Builder only plugin? No, it works for pretty much every WordPress page builder out there, including Gutenberg. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. Uh, if you haven't already, drop a like on the stream for me, please. That would be awesome. And shout out to all of our members. We're at like 14 members. I called you guys out earlier. Thank you so much for that. Um, that is slider plus 3J. Oh, okay. So not something we're going to do this in this video. Okay. Uh, there was something I was going to look up. What was I going to do? If you have an example of something you... Um... <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll get you, I'll get you a hat, Luke. I can do that. I wanna try to work with this. So my original thought with this was that it would be a border. And then the border would repeat. And the from, well, uh, hmm, how would this work? Because with your from and to, it almost needs like zero to 100 and then back to zero for the opacity. Is that one actually possible? Also, I asked David about this uh, earlier today, but where you scroll up and down like this, like one click of the scroll wheel takes you to the next section of the page. I'm pretty stoked for that because the Tesla site also has that, which I uh, of course didn't do in the video because it just wasn't possible with the plugin, but that is something they're looking into, which is pretty sweet. How would you do this continuous pulse effect like this? It's really, really cool. Um, oh, would you just have it
Well, theirs starts from like a low opacity, ramps up and then back down. So maybe there's a way you can do that that wouldn't be in this plugin, but you could have it ramp from 100% opacity and down. How do you get that movement out of it, the continuous movement? Maybe this one isn't a good example. Let's go through this showcase a little bit more and take a peek at some of these other things. I'm not really feeling that example. It's really not that like practical, quite honestly. A GE website, huh? Oh yeah, kind of this pulsing effect. So what are they doing? Is this just CSS? Oh, with some keyframes, okay. More CSS than GSAP, yeah, that's kind of kind of what it felt like. So what's this GE one? So this has that mouse move effect where it kind of moves the page back and forth. Ooh, that's cool. I like that. The way the heading is like big and scaled, and then it comes in back to normal size. That's pretty sweet. Anything else worth mentioning? Those photos move up and down. What else do we got? Okay. Um, we could do that. We could do that heading. That one's pretty basic. I was looking for something else cool. Go, ho, ho, don't know what this is. Oh, no, that's not what we're after. I'll leave the GE one up for now, and we'll um, try to look at a couple others. What is this skin one? That could be a little too risque for a permaslug stream. Oh, that's crazy looking. Not one I'm interested in. That is just some basic stuff. All this would be pretty easy. I did see somebody ask about parallax. Um, we'll see about that. Scroll, okay. Are these just separate photos that pop up on scroll? Yeah, see this is more of that like snapping and kind of like scroll trigger. I was thinking we've already done two scroll triggers for now. Let's, I really want to find one more cool one and we can nail that down. That's neat. Even though it's taking forever to do anything. Initial text change on which one, Luke? Oh no, sound. That's another thing I've noticed is on so many of these, these uh, GSAP like animation demos, they all have some sort of sound to them. Like, don't play sound in my browser. I did not ask that. Ooh, the, the uh, heading, the way that it comes in. Watch, let me go back. Yeah, see that right there. Uh, yeah, Luke, I guess it got dropped out of the chat. I didn't see it, Try, uh, paste it again. Maybe Taylor timed you out. I really like the stagger effect on the text, but I don't know that it will do individual letters in a heading, will it? Oh, look at that. Yeah, these are individual divs. That's how they got away with that. Is this even readable? Like, can you copy? No, I can't actually copy this. Hmm. Yeah, I know, Oliver. That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh-oh. I just clicked a random link in chat. <gasps> okay, so ask. Oh, David said that uses split text. That's not possible right now, but will be one of the first updates. Cool. Ask for. Oh, yeah, that is neat. Although, did you see I, I scrolled like a couple of times 
and I skipped a word. This is one of those things, like I said, where like, I don't think I would ever actually use this. That is dope, actually. Where the, the, it comes up and has that left and right effect. Oh man, and then it does the reverse when you scroll back up. That's actually really sick. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna shortlist that one. Apparently I have to hold to open this person's website. I'm out of here, that takes way too long. Yeah, that one hurts my brain, don't like that. This is really cool how when you hover over it, it like has kind of this effect with the image behind it. That's crazy looking. Oh, and the waves as you scroll too. Hmm. Okay. So what do you guys think? Should we pick something out of this site to do? <laughs> Luke. One more, maybe digital engineering assistant, huh? Let's see what digital engineering assistant has to say. Yeah, most of these are very complex, you're right. Some of these are super cool, the way these images like kind of combine together. I'm trying to find one more. Ooh, that's a cool reveal. That is very nice. <laughs> okay, that's what we're going with. So let me clean up my tabs here. I am going to get rid of this. We are going to back out of oxygen and we're gonna create a new page called St. Regis. And then I want to grab some of their borrow some of their assets. Chris says, gotta pop off. Thank you very much. Appreciate you hanging out this whole time. I'm going to snag their logo. Don't tell them. Nobody saw that. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. Nobody saw that. Okay. So uh, I had happy files. I took off happy files. I need it again so I can add those SVGs. Um, boo -boo, happy, 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 happy. Happy files. Yeah, exactly. They're getting free promotion. Who doesn't like promotion? Exposure. Okay, so we got those two photos. What else happens in this preloader effect? So it draws the logo, which I'm not gonna do but essentially we have that white div that overlays this section. Um, hmm. Oh, interestingly, you, you can't actually select any of that text. Is it actually readable or is it baked into the image? No, it's okay. It's a heading. All right. So I'm trying to think about how we would do this exactly because there's a div that overlays it so in oxygen, would we have the div on top somehow? What would be the proper way to do this? What I'm picturing is the div in the structure panel on top and then the other one down below. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just go ahead and start building that first section. That's yeah, that, that feels right. Luke, I agree. So it's basically just a white div 
with the logo in the middle. So I'm gonna go with div, width will be 100%, and then our height will be 100 VH. We're gonna add an image, which is our SVG. The div is going to be center, center. And actually I wanna change the background color of this div real quick so I can see the logo and we need this to be maybe 250. It's not very big. Uh, asking, will it be ready before Black Friday? I have no idea. I don't think David and Ronas have committed to a date yet just to make sure that it's all buttoned up before they actually release it. Uh, what was the what was the color? Was the logo actually black? Oh yeah, it is. I can't change this, right? Because the SVG got uploaded as white. <laughs> Hold on. Give me a second. I'm gonna be a complete hack real quick. One momento, please. Is it just fill, Taylor? Like in CSS? Is that what you're talking about? Black. Zoom in. Oops, not JavaScript, CSS. Apparently not. Uh, Luke says, you know what would be sick? Instead of the div moving up off the page completely, but move it up to top to become the heading and then links fade in after. Ooh, yeah, that would be cool. That actually sounds really sick. <laughs> what happens to the logo after the load? Oh, it just moves up to the top there. You guys are setting the bar pretty high here. You think your boy can do it? Oh, I need to add the SVG inline. Oh, okay. I, I got it under control, hold on. Do not fear. Like I said, I'm being a complete hack over here. Just one second. I'm cheating hardcore. That is true, Luke. You are totally right. Oh my God, that looks terrible. <laughs> I'm gonna make it smaller so nobody can see that pixelation. <laughs> okay. All right, so we have this div that is uh, our preloader. And then the logo is centered in the preloader and in this menu here. So then we have two links. We have an Instagram icon, a divider, looks like a language switcher, and then our menu block here. So then uh, we have image. Let's see. I guess we'll need one more div that's gonna have some text links. Um, main menu. You know what I've been asking for for a while is keyboard nav, because whenever I type in text, I almost always want text link and I go, Press right arrow key and nothing happens. Please, Elijah, I'm begging you, please. Uh, Federico, they said that is coming soon. It's not baked in currently, the stagger on the text by letter, not yet. Okay, so then this text is going to be uh, not main menu, I'm gonna go with menu links. Then this, uh, let's see, typography will be uppercase. Then the color is gonna be white because right now we won't be able to see it, which is fine. I'm gonna change this to say home. I'm gonna add some margin and then we will duplicate it. And we're gonna say, I don't know what the other one was, contact or something like that. Contact and reserve now. We'll go with reserve, reserve now. Add class keyboard nav to, oh dude, you're right. That'd be really nice. Okay, so this div, we're gonna horizontal, middle, and we'll just go with center align. It's not gonna do anything. 
but I want this to be horizontal. And real quick, so I can see my links, I'm gonna change the text color to black, even though that's not right at the moment. So this div, we're gonna go with layout and uh, I'm gonna just hack this and we're gonna go with absolute position because I want this logo to be perfectly centered. This stuff may need to change, but I'm just trying to get something working in this short time. Then we have an Instagram icon. So in this div, I'm just gonna add an icon. I'm gonna go with Instagram, change that to white too, make the font size like 25. And then uh, I'm not gonna worry about the divider. I will put another div there that has a background color of red. Ooh, that's awful. I'll go with that sort of red. And then an icon inside of that. Uh, is it hamburger? I always forget. Menu, lines, what the hell is it called? Uh, do, 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 do. Um, is it, I think it's menu and linear icon. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Uh, icon is going to be white. Size is going to be 25. We're going to go with 15 pixels of padding. And there we go. Okay. So then this div is going to be probably just hidden with an opacity of zero at first on the preloader. Then will we change this one's height after the fact? Because right now it's set to a height of 100 VH and then it's going to become what? Like roughly, I don't know, maybe 30 VH? And I have this set to middle align. I think this is gonna work. This is absolute, so this shouldn't change. And then below this, we're gonna add in another section. It's gonna have our background image, which was this sweet looking hotel deck thing. And then it says sweet collection. Nope. Oh. Sweet collection. That is white. Change the font size way up. If you make the header normal, then move and animate the position to animate the preloader to header like Luke said. That's what I'm working on, yeah. I'm, I'm anticipating changing this white section to just shrink. And then the background color is basically just gonna fade away. Oh, but would that div need to be inside of this one then? I think it would. So I think I would need another one inside of this that's gonna be at the bottom. Let's see, let's change that to vertical, right? And then this one is going to be margin top of auto. And then, bear with me guys, I think, I think I'm onto something here. Let me know if I'm doing this glaringly, obviously wrong. But you would want to animate the header layout? Um, I don't know. Do I? Do I, do I? Because what I'm thinking is, I'm basically just gonna make, oh wait, but this can't be, hold on. I think I'm gonna wrap this one with another div. Then this one is gonna go inside of here. Oh, drag and drop. I guess you could just have the header underneath and animate the white object. Mm, yeah, don't know exactly. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there. So then this div is gonna be the background. I, I'm, I appreciate both of your input very much. I'm thinking I might be able to pull this off. We're gonna set this div to a minimum height of, let's say like 75 VH. I'm gonna delete this section. Okay, so here's my thinking. Let me walk you through this. Don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try. So what should happen is when the page loads, this whole div right here with our links and this Instagram icon, and so, oh, this Instagram icon needs some margin on the right, I couldn't see it. Um, that is gonna have an opacity of zero. This whole section is set to a height of 100 VH. Then what's gonna happen is, since it's stacked on top of this other div with the background, then this one is just, just gonna shrink and then it's gonna take the background from this white color and just basically make it transparent. Oh wait, shit, that's not gonna work. Cause it's not actually on top of it. Um. It needs to be over top of it. Trying to think, trying to think. Let me see here. So that needs to go inside of it. This div contains that, there's my image. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Can I do that after the fact, actually? Because you can do it in motion page, can't you? Um, well, no, you can't. I don't think you can change position. We'll, we'll try it. Okay, we're going to leave this as is. Let's uh, go back over here to motion page. We're gonna try and see how far we can get with this setup as is. Okay, so we're gonna create a new timeline. This one's gonna be called St. Regis. Okay, so it's so a page event, page load. So after, lo oh, we need to change our preview here. So St. Regis. So from this is going to be good. So our two, uh, selector on this guy. Let me make sure I have the right div selected. 166, yes. So that is going to go with our background color is basically just going to become white with an opacity of zero. And nothing changes, of course, because there's nothing underneath it. Then our dimensions, our height is gonna change. Oh, you, oh here we go, VH. We're gonna change that to like 25. Mmm, look at this. We're on to something here, y'all. That is so dope. <laughs> Let's just look real quick. Dude, that's not what I'm actually after, but that's sick. That is so awesome. <laughs> wow, okay. The other thing that I want to do is add another selector in here, which is going to be this whole div. Uh, is that one 366? Is that when this one is called? Yes. So this one is going to have just a two opacity of one. Oh, actually, I don't need the two value. I forgot that. So from opacity is zero. And then that's going to ramp up. Maybe we're even going to do it slightly delayed. So as it moves up, we're gonna just play this. Oh, but my links are white. Um, 
how do I remove the background off this other one? So on our div here, which is the big one, once it ends, I guess I would add another selector at this point. Unfortunately, Dwayne, the beta is over right now, but um, they are hopefully releasing in just a few days is the, is the, um, is the plan. Okay, so I think we need Evan. Yo, what's up, dude? Glad to have you. Yeah, two days in a row. That's what I was thinking, Taylor. Good call. So position is going to be absolute. And then uh, it's just going to be top zero, right? That's all I really need to do. So let me refresh here. Yo, let's go. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna add another selector here. That is going to be this heading. It's going to be that ID and it's from opacity of zero. And it's not gonna start until the other animation has completed. Save, and then let's come back over here and we'll click on play. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. That's unreal. That's literally unreal. Like, oh, dude. Benedict, uh, it's not, it's, there's a link in the description below. You can sign up for the preview release. And um, basically what that will do is whenever they release it, which should be just a few, uh, few days, then you'll get a notification. Add a 20 pixel translation to the headline, Taylor. Is that what you're talking about? So like Y of 20. Yeah, good call. Oh man. <laughs> the that was <laughs> that was me having a moment. I apologize. Okay. Maybe actually, let's actually do an X translation on our div over here. So we're gonna go translate X uh, like negative 20. Actually, I want it to be positive 20. So it comes in from the other side. It is, it is Taylor. Hopefully somebody splices it up and makes memes out of me. Makes my channel grow more. I kind of want this to be a little bit more, maybe like 30 pixels and then I want some shadow on that text so it's a bit more readable uh this div oh so yeah with the absolute it does make it a little bit wonky which which one Taylor this one the initial one Maybe this one would come in about right there. So we'll save that. Let's look at it on the front end. Oh, the background image is jacked up. That's why there's like a weird clipping effect. Uh, Elijah says, have you taken a look at performance impact? I'm curious about that. So we looked earlier at Lighthouse and it all scored perfect. Um, I haven't actually had a chance yet to do it like in like an external scan, but so far from what I can tell, it's gonna be essentially no problem at all. You can hide sections in the builder with it. Oh yeah, I always forget that, good call. So I can edit this heading. I want to just add a simple text shadow. Change that opacity down a bit and we'll just go like zero, one, two. Actually, we'll bump the opacity back up. This doesn't look anything special. And then the background image, we're gonna go with cover, you know, repeat, left 50 and top 50. Save, and then I will turn this back on. Let's go. What do you guys think about that? I think that's pretty fresh. 
Yeah, so actually for the sake of example, did I not save this page? Oh, save. Why did it not? Um... Welcome back, Chris. I think we're back. Hopefully we're back. Is it back? Let me know. Please. Ah, oh, thank goodness. I don't know what happened. Had to restart OBS. Sorry about that. Yay. Okay, awesome. Uh, I don't know what we were talking about last, but uh, one good question popped up in chat. Does it, does it host GSAP JS locally or from CDN? And uh, Rado said it can do both. Um, and then he said it's rendered as an inline script. Cool. Uh, I forget what I was doing. I don't know. I forget. I, I don't know if you guys actually saw this. So there is our sweet animation and the um, thing over here. This is in the way. So let me move this down over here. There we go. Let's go. That's awesome. That's so cool and so simple. That wasn't complex to build really at all. So then the other thing is you could build something like this. We wanted to make the title snappier. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so you just basically change it from a second down to one second. Oh, click play. There we go. Yeah, well actually Taylor, you know, you could basically just drag this stuff out a little bit. So the preloader could essentially just start a little bit later. So it could just be like this. Boom. Let's go. So now on the front end, yeah, baby. So the delay, uh, in GSAP, you do have a delay option and all you have to do in this is just move your element out and that is how you add a delay. Uh, fade in the logo, uh, sure. Oh, actually, you know what? Um, it switches from the black one in the preloader to white on the real site, does it not? Yeah, it's black in the preloader. That goes away and then it turns to white. So essentially we would, do I still have oxygen open? Where did it go? No, apparently I don't. So let's do that real quick. Um, I'll move this back over here. So, oh, actually, yeah, 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 we'll leave that. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and then I'm gonna change this one to the white one. So we're gonna save that. So we can just leave them right on top of each other because we're gonna let, let motion page do the heavy lifting here. So we'll refresh this. And if we come back over here, we should have our white one. So the white logo, uh, it's gonna mess up the layout though, is it not? because it's just changing opacity. So that actually wouldn't work. Oh, I, I can set the scale. I could change scale and opacity. So the element would exist on the page, even though it's there twice, that's kind of goofy. But you could, let's go over here. So Evan, they are gonna have presets, yes, but uh, it currently does not. For me, it doesn't, because I'm using a pre-release version. So once we get to the end of this, we have our two logos. Let me think about how we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna add another selector and here in our timeline, what are we gonna do exactly? Um, so this selector, we're gonna do our white logo. So this one's opacity is of course going to be from zero to one. And we don't want that to start until the preloader ends. And that actually, that logo should actually basically go away like right there. 
right? When did that happen? Does it go away before the thing? Oh, it has like a sweep effect and then it basically brushes it away. Hmm, let me think about this. I missed it. I refreshed to look at it and I wasn't even looking. So it scales it down and then when the sweep goes, it uh, disappears. So then wouldn't this logo then be absolute? Is that what I want? Okay, good call, Luke. So refresh the builder real quick. Oh, so since it's still absolute, it still stays right in the middle of the page. So that's actually not gonna help. Static, right? Static, that's what I want. It's not gonna move. So refresh this builder now. Um, let me refresh real quick because I don't feel like the changes that I'm making there are actually being represented. Unless I just don't know the difference between static and uh, fixed, because I'm an idiot. Huh. Oh gosh, that looks terrible <laughs> when the white starts fading in on top of the black. Hmm. I want the logo to stay put. So am I gonna need to put that somewhere else in my structure panel? If I took the black one and stuck it out here. No, that's not gonna work. Oh, right, Josh, okay, good call. So top left 50, then transform it negative 50 each axis. All right. So selector image, then from and to translate is negative 50 and negative 50. but it still carries with it. That is actually pretty interesting though. So on this, on the right um, path there, I honestly am not super worried about that. What I wanted to do was just get it to look nice when it transitions from black to white. So we're gonna do that. So we'll leave that there. We have our image here. And then I'm just gonna scale this So we're basically going to just to scale and we're going to change this down to zero. But I want that to be done like pretty soon in the animation. So here is where our preloader goes. Yeah, I figured we'd have to change the structure a bit because it wasn't going to work. So I want this to be like super quick actually. That kind of looks terrible, honestly. I think I'm gonna not use, oh, I think I'm gonna do opacity as well. So two is gonna be zero. Uh, scale also looks absolutely garbage. I think I'm just gonna make that go away. And then our image will come in sooner. 
So our images opacity is going to be one. And again, we actually don't need the from in this case since we already have a two of one. So we're gonna start this. That's kind of cool because you can't really tell that the black goes away because the white picks it. Well, actually, yes, you can because they're not in the same position. <laughs> but I think it's close enough. Oh, well, our logo is in the wrong spot because then it, <laughs> uh, whenever we can get dynamic classes, because I think in motion page, you'll be able to add and remove classes based on different things in the future. Um, we'll be able to fix that. But the black one actually technically still exists right here, which is why that's not lining up properly. So maybe there's a slightly more elegant way to do this. I guess you would possibly want the scale to be zero. Could you scale from 0 0.5 to one and on hitting one, it changes to white? Yeah, I think you could. You just need two separate, uh, you know, kind of like entries in your timeline. Okay, that's a little bit better. So the alignment's still not quite right. I bet the element probably still, still takes up space. Um, also, the fade effect isn't exactly right in terms of you know comparing it to our example because it stays white. Yeah, we kind of changed this because we ended up turning our preloader into our header. I think if you were to achieve this exact layout, you would use a different div and you would sweep it up which actually might be a bit easier to recreate this more faithfully. But I think the point remains that this actually does work, even though this is not really that readable. There's definitely things that you'd want to fix here in terms of layout and structure and stuff. The point remains that like you can do some pretty dope stuff. Try using CSS filter invert on the black. Um, where is my black image? So filter I'm assuming I can't put one in a percentage field. Yep, yeah, it doesn't seem like that works. All good. I'm really, really stoked on how that is. Obviously, this isn't going to be a real site, but that does work very well. Um, yeah, so invert 100%. Oh, yeah, good call. Let me try that. Where did it go? Filter. I can't scroll down in this menu. Hopefully, invert is the last one. Let me change the, get rid of the scale and the opacity here so we can see it. Oh yeah, it does. Why are my headings misaligned here? Let me save this and refresh. There we go. There's something weird with the layouts. So then actually I wouldn't need the white one. Oh wait, but the white one's the SVG, is it not? I don't think that matters. So if we restart our animation, so we now have one logo. Yeah, sweet. Thanks, Josh and Taylor. That's super cool. So instead of you know trying to mess around with layouts for two different logos, we just use that, that filter invert 100%. That's so cool. Dude, this is, this is straight up crazy. This software is unbelievable. That's extremely cool. What do you guys think of this? Super cool. I'm very much a fan of this. So we got some pretty sweet uh, setups going on. We use the pin and just needs 25% black overlay on background to be readable. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So 
it would be div block 366, I believe, right? Uh, 1666, which, where, where is that one in our thing? We actually don't have that. Yep, I agree, Elijah. I'm just gonna do the background overlay in oxygen. Save and refresh. There we go. Oh, baby. It's a triple. I, I'm just basking in, in this amazingness right now. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I don't think it's anything close to Revolution Slider, but I can see where you're coming from on that for sure. Let this stream be the launch event, says Oliver, and about 300 less divs. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> well, we did some pretty sweet layouts here, so I want to say thank you to all of you for hanging out for what has it been now? Uh, I don't even know. The stream timer reset because OBS crashed. Um, two hour, two and a half hours? I have some work to do before the end of the day, and next week is a holiday for those of us in America. On Thursday, it's Thanksgiving, and uh, I'm going out of town. So I'm stoked to be here. If you haven't already, click the link in the description below to get motion page, sign up for their wait list, and they should be launching here in the very near future. Uh, Rados and David, if you guys are still here in the chat, chat, thank you so much. There is Rados, I see you. You guys rock. This is a great piece of software. Thank you for being here the whole time. And uh, I'll stop taking up your time now so you can launch the software and you guys can get some money. Sweet. Thank you, everybody. Before you leave, drop a like, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the very new future.